at Domino's. Kawhi with eight points tonight. Excuse me for a second. Pops on the mic. We stop all the boo and let these guys play. It's our own class. It's not who we are. Knock off the boo. Well, I don't believe I've ever seen that. Anybody that knows anything about sports knows you don't poke the bear. So smooth. There is SGA. And Shea's sparkling night continues. 40 on the night. Siakam goes to work. Kicks it in the corner. Toronto leads by one. 22 lead changes. Heel for the win. Doesn't go. And the Toronto Raptors escape Indiana with the win. The NBA also with the day off on Thursday. So a very good time to talk about all things in the NBA. And our Raptors analyst, Blake Murphy, joins us now. And Blake, let's, of course, start with the Raptors, who are 7-8. and eight. And when they're good, they're good. And when they're bad, they're awful. So what are your biggest takeaways from the Raps so far this season? My biggest takeaway is they have to stop doing themselves such a disservice getting down big in these games. In eight of their last 10 games, they've fallen down by double digits. Now, if you're a really good team, if you're a team that shoots a ton of three-pointers, that's something that you can work your way back from. The Raptors have had to scratch and claw to get back in those games, and the ones that they have been able to win have come against the league's 28th, 29th, and 30th ranked defenses. So as the degree of difficulty picks back up later in the season, they're not going to be able to get away with these big holes They've got to find a way to start games better, as fun as it is when they do make those spirited comebacks. Where do you see Darko Ryakovich's influence on the team? I think so far he, he's done a good job, especially on the more intangible side, the spirit around the team. We see clips and the open gym highlights and things like that after wins and how lively it is, how much buy-in there is. Uh, Will Lou and I on the Raptor show have Dennis Schroeder on weekly, and he's talked a lot about how Ryakovich's leadership style has empowered guys to kind of, you know, take charge if they're natural leaders, to build confidence in a guy like Malachi Flynn, who keeps playing better and better progressively here. Um, so I, I think that side of things is good. If I if there were things that I was going to nitpick on the more micro side, um, I think those are things that, first of all, any rookie head coach is going to go through a little bit. And second of all, we've seen him improve on those things as the season's gone on a little bit, sharper rotations, better mix and match of which players, you know, figuring out which guys to use when. Um, so I, I think all of those things are, are kind of moving in the right direction. I'm Personally, going to need a little bit more time for the tactical side of things to really judge. But so far, you know, despite the record, I think you can be encouraged. Oh, you don't prejudge or judge after 15 games. I like that. Uh, Pascal Siakam said to become an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. As we know, it is early. But what do you think would be the best plan for the Raptors in regards to Siakam? I think for right now, they they need him. If they're going to try to do this thing where they're looking long-term and developing and whatever Scotty becomes is going to dictate the future, but they also want to win right now, Siakam's a very big component of that. Um, I know sometimes it looks like his post-up opportunities and things like that are coming outside of the flow of the offense a little bit. He's actually the number one ranked player in the entire league right now um, in terms of post-up efficiency, both as a scorer and passing out of those situations. So teammates have benefited there. Him and Scotty Barnes, in my estimation, actually have a really nice chemistry here. Lineups where Barnes, Siakam, and Ananobi share the floor have been really, really effective. So short-term, I think you can work with it. I think it's getting better. I think it can make sense. Longer term, you have to decide still if a guy who's about to be 30 and is about to command a max contract is part of the timeline with a 22-year-old burgeoning star. And that's something that, you know, you that's, that's a bigger question for the front office than just what's happened on the court here so far. I think it's going to be a really tough decision come February, and there are going to be a lot of teams with their eyes really closely on the Raptors. We must talk about Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's averaging just over 30 points per game. The Thunder are second in the West. And yeah, those MVP chants are, of course, out for Hamilton's own. So are the Thunder finally ready to compete with the league's best? I think so, at least over the course of the regular season and certainly to make some noise in the playoffs. I think right now, Shea has a really good case to be made that, you know, he's top three, if not top one on MVP ballots. He's the best 
player and the engine of one of the best teams in all of basketball. Um, he obviously the, the scoring is there. The passing is there. His defense is kind of taken a step to another level still not elite but much better than we've seen in the past and i don't know how but teams seem to keep sleeping on this thunder team uh, you know if they're gonna get this done i think they'll probably have to be a team that either sees a lot of internal growth over the course of the season or goes out and addresses a need that they have which is they're the worst rebounding team in basketball and giving away those extra possessions come playoff time can be a lot tougher. But right now I think they're a pretty safe bet to win, you know, 45, maybe even 50 games. And, you know, I, I don't think you want to see them across the bracket from you. If you're one of the other top seeded West teams, we spent some time in our meeting earlier tonight talking about Greg Popovich and what happened last night on the court. So I'm going to put it to you cut or uncut pops telling fans to stop booing Kawhi Leonard with the microphone last night. What do you think? Yeah, cut that out. You, you got to know better. You got to know that that's only going to make them boo more. On top of which, I, I just can't believe there's not a rule that like coaches don't get a technical foul for grabbing uh, the live mic. But in that situation, you got to know that's only going to rile the crowd up more. I felt like it was very principal Popovich where he was trying to, you know, elementary school, trying to get up in front of everyone and, yeah, quieting them down. And it, it just didn't go like he had envisioned it to go. So... Okay, agree yeah, with stands you. Stands at the door and turns the light off until everyone calms down, uh, <laughs> but tougher with 18,000. Yeah, adults, exactly. Uh, Blake, thanks as always for your time. Thanks, Ivanka. Blake mentioned Dennis Schroeder joining the Raptors show on today. Here he is on his relationship with Canadian soccer star Alfonso Davies. When he first got to, uh, to Germany, um, he played in Wolfsburg, that's like 30 yeah. minutes from my hometown. Um, we watched him play there because he had a hell of a hype. You know, he came from the MLS and yeah. uh, we was just supporting and uh, watched the game. And then from there on, you know, we got connected. And every summer when I'm in Munich, you know, I get to see him um, getting, you know, dinner, um, talk about life, you know, and um, he's a great guy. Uh, I think he's one of the best guys, you know, in, 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 in soccer as a person and of course always um great seeing him and um i mean i always appreciate that he's you know showing love coming up for the second year in a row the oilers outside of a playoff spot at american thanksgiving significant maybe